In this video, I'm going to talk about reading series and data frames. And as I have said before, so in Pandas, Pandas data frame basically looks like um, a spreadsheet, an Excel sheet. So um, it's natural that Pandas is a good thing to read CSV files. So CSV files are files that are comma separated values. That's what the CSV stands for. So you can open this in Excel or in your uh, spreadsheet program but you can just as well work with these files in pandas and pandas can basically do the stuff you're doing with these files in excel generally so here i'm looking at my file pokemon.csv which is this one if i open it like this so i see it's it looks like a spreadsheet um, and pandas is perfect to work with these files so i can simply call pandas.readcsv and the name of the csv and i have it as a pandas data frame and I'm going to work with this Pokemon data frame for quite a lot because that's what I do. Okay, so imagine this was a data set which somebody gave you. Um, if you don't know any of its content, what are the first steps you do? So at first you look at a few of these values. So let's look at the head which gives me the first five lines of the data frame. Let's see, there are these columns and yeah, so they have either numbers as values or strings. There's a boolean and there are quite many of them. Next, I can let pandas describe the data frame for me. And this gives me the number of values each, the mean, standard deviation, mean, the percentiles, and the max value for all of those lines which have uh, numeric values. So I see I have 800 rows in total. All of these rows have the values for total, HP, attack, etc. The mean number, where well, that's just a number, so we see that that's not too useful. But we see the mean total stats for all Pokemon is 435. So Pokemon with the worst, then these total stats are shitty. And if they're too high, um, so this here is probably, what's over? Mewtwo? Mewtwo and stuff. Oh, no, the, the Mega Evolutions. Okay, and I get like mean marks and so on. So this is really useful. And for those lines which do not contain um, numeric values, I could, for example, go for value counts. So type here is a string. So for strings, I can go for value counts. That describe doesn't work for strings, but I can count how many values are there and how often each value are there. So when you see here, most Pokemon, so the single most type one type is water. So most Pokemon has a, um, his, his first type water. And only really few are flying as first type. For legendary, I can do the same. So for booleans here, I also don't have statistics for booleans. And we have 735 Pokemon and um, non-legendary Pokemon and 65 legendary Pokemon. I don't think I have the latest generation because I didn't change this data frame. But yeah, so um, most of the time when you're reading CSVs, so depending on how you saved it. So if we're looking here, I already have the number here. And most of the time I want this first line to be the index. So I specify when reading the CSV that my index column is supposed to be the first. Um, but now if I, from that, we set the index and look at the values, I'm seeing that this number only goes to 721. However, I have 800 values in here. So the numeric index, the maximum numeric index, if I reset it, is 799. Why is that? Well, I see, for example, because this Pokemon, they're, they're, there's twice the same Pokemon with the number 720. Um, so what we could do with this data set, well, is we could drop the duplicates for the numbers. So such that from this two Pokemon here, I only have one version of this. I drop the duplicate, I drop the second two Pokemon, I drop the seven Pokemon with the number 720. Now I only have one version of this. Um, for Sugata, there was probably the same thing because at the 50%, the 100% from I don't get the last generation. So it's not even the last, but yeah. So mega evolutions are out or something. Now, okay, um, what else can I do? Well, I can um, get these Pokemon, which are not Volcanion because I didn't want this Volcanion in here. So well, I can work with this, obviously. Um, what else can I do? I want to remove the duplicate Pokemon here and save that as a new um, CSV file. So I want to reduce the number of 800 Pokemon where they also have these forms and the like in there to simply one Pokemon for every number. So only the, I don't know, something form of Sigali, only the something form of Hoopa Hoopa. Um, 
So let's do that. So I'm doing this by resetting the index here again, such that we have a new index, such that I can drop the duplicates of the column. So I only drop the duplicates. I only see those sets as those rows as duplicate where the number column uh, is duplicate. And then I reset the index again because if I'm running, um, if I'm running only this part here. Uh, I see that I again added another index, and if I'm resetting this here again, actually, am I here? I have another index here, and then I'm dropping this index column. Why do I do this? Well, because when I remove, drop the duplicates here, I set this index here again. Now, as I set this index here before, which goes too far, and I want this here to be my new index. So I drop, I to, res to get rid of my index, I have to reset the index to make a normal column out of my index, such that I, such that I can then drop this column. Okay, this is what I'm doing here. I'm making this index a column such that I can drop it. And now if I do this, I'm seeing that my number corresponds to um, my actual index here. The number here uh, starts at 1, the index starts at 0. So now I really have 720 Pokemon with 720, it starts counting zero lines. So this here is actually the data frame where there are no duplicates. Okay. Now, when saving it, I want to set the index to my number line again. Why do I want that? Well, because here my index is the number line as well. Um, if I open it as plain text, I see that the number here is the index. And yeah, I can save that simply to CSV. And now I have a new CSV, which looks just like my old one, um, but without the, oops, not the country's one, uh, but this one, but without, for example, doubles here where there are mega evolutions. All right, perfect. So now if I look at this, it looks again like a normal CSV file. Okay, and if I only wanted to get, for example, the Pokemon Generation 1, um, I could simply go for, for example, I could index it like this. I only want those World Generation equals 1, and I can then set the index like this. If I wanted to have a dictionary from this, I could do so too by simply getting this... Um, again dict getting the name as to dictionary and here I can well I now have a dictionary from number to Pokemon name and oh yeah this actually prints only the first few ones why did I do it like this all right as much for opening CSV files and working with um, CSV files and pandas you can also um, open Excel files read Excel also exists uh, read Excel LX um, just Google how to open it in Pandas, just as easy as CSV. And then it's also worth noting that the um, read CSV function has many, many arguments, and many of which you uh, really need and are really important. So, for example, um, you can specify which columns are your index, not only by number, but also by string, or also by list, such that you can automatically create a multi-index. Um, you can specify which values are considered true or false. So if you're exporting from another programming language where, for example, true is lowercase, this is really your friend. Or you can specify the d-type using a dictionary column to type. So for example, if you are um, writing string, if you are writing integers to your CSV file, they're going to be written as string because CSV files don't know the difference. And if you want to interpret them when reading them as integer again, you have to specify that using um, the d-type with the respective dictionary. And you can skip rows if there are comments in the beginning or uh, in the beginning of your file if it's commented. Um, you can also pass dates, which is really really useful, especially with infer data formats. So it will automatically make dates out of strings which may look like a date. So really useful. Many arguments. Um, look at the documentation of this.